It's a morning for all the dubs. All the dubs. Paul Eihander with you on this Tuesday. Instagram Hill on the ones and the twos as we get things going here about last night. NC State Wolfpack continued an amazing school year of uh, postseason bliss. NC State Wolfpack, apparently they are the devils. They could just That could be their nicknames as they move on because they went down to Georgia and took two out of three games, the most important one being last night, 8-5 to five, over the Georgia Bulldogs, in which early on it looked like they were going to struggle to get some runs, and then all of a sudden everything just started happening for them. Yeah, it almost looked like it was going to be a repeat of game two as they were able to get base runners on but not able to advance. And then after the second inning, 10 straight hits. And then that's when the floodgates started to open for NC State and the home runs started to get delivered. There were some moments in that game where I had to keep turning away from it. I was just like, oh, my God, there's two on. All right, oh, there's another two on. And then they would calm themselves down at the mound, have themselves a little chat amongst themselves, get out of trouble. Eli Serrano helped out with that as well. Did uh, did did what he needed. This whole team now moves on and evens things up in Omaha starting on Friday and Saturday for the ACC and the SEC. It is one big east southeast kind of baseball tournament in Nebraska of which four teams will be from the ACC, four teams will be from the SEC. And head coach Elliot Avent, who the ESPN broadcast crew was joking about, well, maybe it's time for him to go because he even said it himself, says maybe he needs to postpone that after on the post game, and wanted this team to make that trip west. I wanted, I wanted these guys to go so bad. Some of them's last chances, Amax last chances, Logan Whitaker's last chance, Little Soul, Sam Highfield, the list goes on and on and on. And uh, uh, for the guys that signed, you know, saying it's, it's their last shot. And uh, there's nothing like walking on a field in Omaha, Nebraska for the ceremony, which we missed in 21 walking out there because of COVID. And uh, <clears throat> can't wait to see those guys do that. And it's interesting how much more storytelling is now being done after the fact. Right. About this baseball team, about state, just in terms of all of its teams making the postseason runs, how everything is becoming truly special. And now that they move on to – what essentially goes back to round one. So round one of the College World Series, for those of you just kind of playing catch-up to college baseball, as the postseason gets underway, they play in the regional tournament, of which they play kind of a round-robin four-team format. You advance out of that as the sole team, and then you go to the Super Regionals, which is what we just had, best two out of three. We go back to the round-robin format as we go back to Omaha before it turns into a best-of-three-again World Series. So this is essentially kind of the the semifinal rounds, so to speak. You're going to play three games, and hopefully of those three games, if you're an ACC fan or if you're a state fan or do not want to leave out Carolina by any means who was able to get the sweep over West Virginia and did not have to have a game three, that you hope that you can make it to the end. For state, though, on their side of the bracket, which they just call bracket two, it's four SC, it's three SEC teams. And on the other side of the on the other side of the ledger, in bracket one, it's the other three ACC teams plus one SEC team. Kentucky being the first opponent that NC State will play on, I believe, Saturday. It is Saturday. I, w I didn't think they would turn around and play on Friday at 2 o'clock. I'm sure we'll have that game right here on 999 The Fan. Paul is just going ahead and giving me all the thumb signs. Yep, all the thumbs, <laughs> all the fingers. Behind, yeah. behind the scenes. Paul is doing hand signals like the catcher would be doing during a baseball the game. Digits. But you, you made the comparison about – how this has turned into a great athletic gear for NC State, right? Between the men's basketball team making it to the Final Four for the first time since 1983. I know NC State's baseball team made it to the College World Series back in 2021, but did they really make it to the College World Series? I don't have to go into the details. NC State fans know what happened. But the two comparisons that I'm seeing is, uh, outside of making these national championship runs, it's that both teams, both programs did it with veteran players. DJ, DJ Burns, DJ Horn, Casey Morcell for the basketball team. Elliot Avent said last night that they were going to have to lean on their veteran guys, and they certainly did it with Grad Pennington smacking that two-run shot to tie the game in the top of the third. And then, of course, you had Nola Souls, uh, Eli Serona, the third, and then uh, Alex Sosa all making impacts for NC State. And then Alec, I can never remember his last name, but he's the ECU transfer. Makarevich. Yeah, Makarevich. 
uh, homer into right field in the top of the eighth. That was kind of the exclamation point, I feel like, in that baseball game. But it just shows that having – sappy veteran players goes a long way in sports in any program. No, I know you're not uh, discounting the women's basketball team making the Final Four with, again, a veteran team. Sanaya Rivers. Yeah, yep. Sanaya Rivers, Madison Hayes, River Baldwin. The, that list goes on and on and too. So don't worry, everybody. Don't go, whoa, keyboard warrior. No, no. The UNC State women's basketball was right in the thick of this, which made it, which makes this such a, a unique year, certainly for State and their fans. And you don't think Dave Dorn's sweating a little bit right now going, oh, man. I, I need to continue this streak and continue this run because we know, like, you know, like, state cross country, you know, women's and men's, like, hey, you know, we got this. Wrestling, but, too. Yeah, you're just like, oh, crap. Well, I mean, Paul, they expand the college football playoffs to 16 teams. Here, here's the deal. NC State typically flirts with, that around, flirts with that number at the end of every football season. But go ahead. What we said back in March when – basketball was rolling for all the triangle teams it really was i mean it, the, everybody went to the everybody went to the dance everybody got to go dancing was just enjoy the ride right just enjoy the ride how special things are that for carolina fans you get to wear the blue just a little bit longer into the summer without having to answer any questions like, oh, hey, football season doesn't start for a couple more months or you know the wolf pack shirts that you bought during the final four and whatnot that you can dig right back out again and make happen. And for everyone making that trip to Omaha, uh, I wish you all the best. Just make sure you try the beef and uh, tip well and buy all the jello shots you can. We'll talk I was going to say go to the bar with the jello shots. We'll, ta- we'll talk about that. Uh, undeniable. So, yes, all the dubs. Paul Ihander here, Instagram Hill here on the ones and twos. Uh, big dub yesterday for a crew out of Kinston, Graham's hometown, du jour. Actually, his just hometown. The crew from Release won the. Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament's fabulous fisherman division because they caught a 504-pound Blue Marlin yesterday afternoon. And by winning the division, that crew, Captain Rom, $1.7 million. Yep. Oh, my God. $1.7 million. Like, but- kids, make sure you tell your dads that you want to go fishing because it is a lucrative Lucrative business this time of year. You know, it's funny. Dennis Cox, producer of The Drive with Tim Donnelly, which you can listen to every afternoon right here on The Fan from 3 to 6. We were sitting in the bullpen yesterday, and Dennis, of course, got familiar with the Big Rock Fishing Tournament last year when we had two captains uh, that were participating in the tournament that were part of kind of a a fiasco um, that I don't really need to go into detail. If you go to our fan YouTube channel and look up the Big Rock, it actually broke like our algorithm for most view videos on YouTube at that point. But he was sitting in the cubicle yesterday, and he was going just through the the different uh, incentives of the stuff you could win the tournament. He was like, how crazy would it be if somebody won the fabulous prize of catching the first Blue Marlin over 500 pounds? And then, sure enough, around 3.30 in the afternoon, I sent him a text. I was like, you literally spoke this into existence. But, yeah, Monday afternoon, the crew game time caught a 506-time pound Blue Marlin. Fisher Clay uh, Nally, I believe, made the catch as a Monday evening is the largest fish caught at the tournament thus far. That's just awesome. $1.73. Million dollars, and it had to be five. It had to be five hundred pounds plus, right? Yep, five hundred and four. So this thing checks in at five hundred four. So it's a good thing the marlin had a breakfast. Yeah, you know, and 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 the, and the fight didn't work off the calories. Good thing no sharks got to it either before it yeah, got back to no the weigh-in kidding. station. Well, you know, marlins swim all together. So if they were going to get that one, you know, they were going to get it in there anyway. But well, K Town stay down, as we like to say down in Kent. Yep. dude, does it. Listen, you're going to look around. Basketball Kingston. and fishermen. That's what we're known for how, down there. How do, how do you how do you know uh, how do you know you win big in the Big Rock in Kinston when you see the guy driving the nicest truck with the newest plates? Guaranteed. Guaranteed. U.S. women won last night at uh, the soccer tournament. They defeated the uh, veteran group from uh, Courage FC to win the inaugural women's edition of the soccer tournament, the TST at a carry last night, fireworks and, and pinatas and all that stuff went off for a million. Again, a million dollars, right? Yesterday in the triangle, like millions of dollars was won without having to bet on a sport, without having to uh, sign a big contract, without having to go get a bunch of scratch offs from the Handy Hugos. Like that's $2.7 million awarded in roughly like three or four hours. <laughs> 
Like, that's ridiculous. That's a great point. That's a ton of prize money in one spot. In just one spot. All right, lots of wins yesterday. Again, all about the dubs today. Uh, Florida Panthers won last night after spotting the Edmonton Oilers a one nothing lead on kind of a fluky bounce goal. Uh, Sergey Bobrovsky settled in. The Florida Panthers did the Florida Panthering, and they win 4-1. to one. Head coach Paul Maurice, who we all seem to enjoy these days, he's a a much a uh, a much a, a, much a uh, I don't know stereotypical hockey coach at this point when it comes to uh, quotable quotables. Talked about the story of his team this postseason. We got two years of doing it. It's uh, we play tight games. We've always played tight, hard games. Um, we don't necessarily score easily. That's not a function of not skill or talent. And the story in these playoffs, we've seen some pretty fine goaltending. I don't. I, 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 we never really got to the test in game one. That wasn't an issue. Um, but it's experiential. Game three coming up on Thursday. Florida Panthers in Edmonton as they go to Edmonton in this one. Uh, if you had Evan Rodriguez as an anytime goal scorer, you were very happy yesterday. He scored a couple, including one on a power play. This one really wasn't that close. It was tight early on, and then that third period kind of blew him away for uh, Florida. So well done there. And finally, the biggest winner of them all, UConn. UConn getting a win because Dan Hurley said no late yesterday afternoon to the Lakers' offer of six years and $70 million. And he listened. They did what they did, according to Woj. They made a case. They made a very compelling, and that was the word Dan Hurley used with me, compelling, a compelling case for why he should be their coach. I don't think it came down to money. I don't think the Lakers didn't offer enough. He would have been the sixth highest paid coach in the league, but I think in the end, at 51 years old, and knowing the way he was going to have to adapt, it would be fairly dramatic, guys. You adjust to that league. It doesn't necessarily adjust to you, but the Lakers wanted him for who he is and what he would bring, and I think he believed that. He may do this at some point in his career. I just don't think that the timing was right for him. I don't think it was the Lakers were right for him. Yesterday, if you listen to the program, next up here on 99.9 The Fan every morning at 9 o'clock, I said he wasn't taking the job. It would have to be life-changing money. And for most of us, yes, for all of us listening, $70 million over six years would be life-changing money. But to uproot your family, sometimes it takes a little bit more. And maybe that's not even about price. It's not even about having uh, the Sean McVay uh, house in Malibu overlooking the ocean. It's not uh, the Caleb Williams uh, USC deal with with cars and the and the twentieth floor penthouse apartment. There's a little bit more to it. No, I didn't think he was going to take it. I know a lot of people were saying that the L.A. Lakers could have offered a lot more, and I get it with the notable franchise that they are in the NBA. But the highest paid NBA basketball coach right now is Steve Kerr, which se- that gets paid seventy five million. Seventy million for a first year basketball coach would have been crazy. That's almost Steve Kerr's salary. Or close to it. It's a lot of cash. It's a lot of cash. Sometimes, again, the 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 argument, right? Everyone says they have their price, right? What's your price? What's it going to take? Eh, you know, I'm going to take the shift manager role, and they're going to bump me up from twenty three to twenty six dollars. Do I want it? Yeah. Or do I just like the twenty three dollar job I have because I don't have to do P and L, I don't have to do inventory, I don't have to do scheduling, I don't have to open up the shop on days when someone gets sick, and I don't have to close the place down one night a weekend. Sometimes it takes a little bit more. Sometimes you're happy where you're at. So UConn, big winners yesterday as well. All right, coming up, finally, the Canes ready to shuffle the front office. Next up on 99.9 The Fan. Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 999. The fan delivered by Talk It Out NC. NC State defeated the Georgia Bulldogs 8-5 in Game 3 of the Athens Super Regional Round, securing the final spot in the 2024 College World Series. This is the Wolfpack's first College World Series appearance since 2021. U.S. Women's National Team defeated the NC Courage Monday night 6-3 and won the $1 million prize in the soccer tournament. After the Courage matched the U.S. Women's goal for goal, U.S. Women's pulled away late and got the final goal in target score to secure the win. 
10 members of NC State's 1983 National Championship winning men's basketball team have filed a lawsuit against the NCAA seeking damages for unauthorized use of the name, image, and likeness. The lawsuit filed in Wake County Superior Court on Monday morning requests a jury trial. Find these stories and more on WRLSportsFan.com. Paul Ihander here on this Tuesday morning. Instagram Hill here as well. The Carolina Hurricanes, after a couple of weeks of interviews and uh, basically sitting on the pot without taking a dump, have decided to get off the pot. <laughs> Carolina, it's what it is. Kiss some laxatives. It's just what it is. Like, make the decision. We made the decision. Yesterday, we joked about the help wanted sign on the big reader board outside of PNC Arena. No longer there. Expectations are that Eric Tulski will be the next general manager of the Carolina Hurricanes. He is uh he is he's ready to go. Interim tag is coming off. The interim tag is coming off the board. There's no doubt about it. Cal from Cal Berkeley to the Carolina Hurricanes, Eric Tulski is now going to be the general manager of the Carolina Hurricanes. 17 days ahead of the NHL draft, 19 days and change ahead of the Canes free agency. So now, check mark, right? Carolina Hurricanes offseason finally can move forward. We can all lean forward just a little bit in our chairs because a lot of things have been put on hold or at least uh, slow play, right? If you ever play poker against anybody and all they do is check because they just need to know they just want to stay in the game or they're just trying to trap you eventually. Check, 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 check. It's kind of what the Canes have been doing. Not a lot of news. I mean, honestly, the, the only piece of news outside of this was the Ryan Suzuki signing. And that was okay. So. And again, you spelled Jalen Chatfield wrong. <laughs> truth. That's truth. So with all this cap space and $29 million, what's the first step for trader Eric Tulski? That's, that's what I called him when he first got the interim job. That's what he's going to take with us. As we move on, Eric, you are welcome on the program anytime. Just give us a buzz. You know how to find us. Or if not, we'll see you at Kane's Corners events at Backyard Bistro. Either way, either way, congratulations. Congratulations. I think when someone gets something nice done for them, they get a new job, you have a friend, you have not a friend or whatever it is, it's still nice to say congratulations because that's what it is. It's congratulations. But now that we get the pleasantries out of the way, there's a job to do. And for Carolina Hurricanes fans, there are some expectations that need to be expected. And the one thing that I am exhausted about that has to be first done on this list outside of, I don't know, moving your office down the hall, which is essentially what this is. And if you've ever seen old Don Waddell's Don Waddell, who left, obviously, to, to move to Columbus, if you've ever seen that office on NHL Network interviews, it's a pretty big office. So there's a lot of stuff to move. Just saying, you know, if it's all in boxes, you got to move all that stuff over there. Now they have people to do that. But now the first step is to deal Marty Natchez. If he doesn't want to be here privately, publicly, don't expect him to say anything. He's not. That's not the kind of person that he is. Like, he's doing TikToks in hallways and dancing. He's got a Chechia World Championship. Like, dude's in a good, happy place. So he's not going to come out and light fires when he doesn't need to light fires. So I will light it for him. Let's deal Marty Natchez. So the question is, where to, who to, and for how much? Sportsnet 32 Thoughts podcast dropped a new episode less than an hour ago. The latest on Marty Natchez from Elliot Friedman. Carolina has either indicated to teams you have what we, you, we want or you don't have what we want. And what some teams told me is that they're wondering if there's going to be some of those teams that were initially told by Carolina, you don't have what we want. Can they do th a three-way deal? So this takes some of the starch out of the, well, we're not going to do a trade with you because of bad vibes between the two of us, right? This takes some of the starch out of, we won't trade him to a conference opponent. First of all, if you have a great deal in front of you or a solid deal in front of you and it's a team that you are a rival of, you still make the trade. You still make the deal. 
for me personally. You only have so many partners to work with. The NHL is 31. You can't just roll out into the into the uh, the sand hills. You can't roll north of the triangle and shop at eight different farmers markets to find that right watermelon. Right? We all know what time of season it is. We all want a sweet watermelon. We want to be able to thump it, make that nice sound. You can shop around a little bit. In the NHL, you only have a handful of other trade partners. That is who you have. You have the best deal. You make it happen. But if you're talking about bringing in another partner, this takes a lot of that salary cap issue out of things because teams that are in contention or teams that have spent a little bit too much on players that they really love to have but really can't afford to have because maybe contracts are coming up, they've already got to the end of their bridge deal, so to speak, which is part of the questions around Seth Jarvis, but that's a restricted free agency deal. That's not a, a UFA. You are thinking about trying to figure out who your best playing partners can be. And that has to be, that has to be, has to be answered. Number one priority, Carolina Hurricanes. I think you're just trying to get the best price for Mario Nations, right? But then you also have to think about the roster pieces between re-signing the other free agents, <coughs> Jake Gensel, and between the draft picks, you know, you got to just decide which one you want to lean more towards and uh, see if you can maybe package it for something else even. But there's bigger questions out there right now uh, outside of how do you re-sign Mario Natchez along with what other guys are you going to re-sign to go along with him so that he can play multiple years along some of these other guys that hopefully you want to bring back to this organization that are still pinned out there in the, in the open market. This team has to play defense. They don't have the goaltending right now. They don't have the stud goaltender, right? And they only have three guys under contract, really, for one more season. Brent Burns, Jacob Slavin, Dmitry Orlov. There's nothing else. Scott Morrow, okay? Scott Morrow. Okay, uh, Scott Morrow, sorry. The future. Tim Donnelly, Scott Morrow. Yes, he's out there. You still have holes. So are you going to fill them with rookies? No, not going to happen. You have elite goal scorers right now in their prime. You have Sebastian Ayo, Andrei Svechnikov, under contract they're going to score for you you're going to bring back Seth Jarvis let's just call it what it is okay he's going to get money he's going to get paid dude's going to get paid he's you're, a fan favorite he's going to get paid he had a career year either it's a bridge deal that's going to cost him way too much money or they're going to pay him long term I suggest just paying the man the long term cash the dude played hurt last year for you that's some hot loyalty right there Hot loyalty. I remember the first year I was here, and I know we're running long. First year, first year I rolled in here, so, uh, someone, a uh, buddy of mine, I was on an Edmonton radio show. They asked me about Seth Jarvis. They didn't ask me about anybody else on this team. They're like, "How is Seth Jarvis doing? How is he doing?" I said, "Rod's learning to trust him." I said he's trying to fit his way into the system. He's playing fourth line minutes. All of a sudden, he's playing second line minutes. Now he's playing top line minutes. The dude has proven it. You're going to go pay him, but this team needs defense. So that's where my next turn of attention goes to and maybe and you're right it's talking about getting those unrestricted free agents back if it's Shea if it's Pesci if it's both I'm not sure you can afford both again the math doesn't math but I think you need to address defense first you have offense you're going to go get whatever you're going to go get now it's not going to be a Michael Bunting kind of guy or for four and a half five million dollars a year if you want to make a big swing make a big swing trader Eric Tulski this is my big point at you moment take the big swing it's the one thing your predecessor didn't do until it was time for him to leave, was take the big swing. Go get it. Be aggressive. Make this fan base either love you or hate you or both. Don't, don't straddle the line. Just point and go, that's what I want. Be like my kids. Go kicking and screaming. That's what I want. That's what I want.